favorite vacation is to go to the beach. And so by spending uh, a few days there this uh, summer, uh, I know how big the ocean is. I get the hotel room that's as high as I can get it so I can see as much of it as I can see. And at least uh, Crowder thinks that one of God's grace is kind of like an ocean. Actually, it's probably more than just that. Can you imagine? Um, I want to take us back to our theme verse, uh, our theme passage, and I want to give you one thought from that passage um, and attack it in a couple different ways, probably three different ways, um, especially the main way that I think Paul is trying to talk about uh, our pursuits. And then uh, I, I need you to think about how that translates um, into your life and into your um, schooling and into your pursuits. And, um, and I'll give you a little assignment at the end, too. Not one that's due any day. It can do, be due any day from now till what's the last day of school? June, somebody's got it. June 9, June 7, I don't know. But you have, you have till then to work on it, although if you wait till then, we'll get all of the assignment on the last day and no one can enjoy it. So uh, maybe you can work on it a little bit. Let me read the passage. Uh, God's word speaks well for itself. Philippians chapter 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same thing again is no trouble to me, and it is a safeguard for you. Beware of the dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the false circumcision. For we are a true circumcision who worship in spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh. If anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more. I was circumcised on the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to the righteousness which is in the law found blameless. But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as lost for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and encountered them but rubbish, so I may gain Christ. And I may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith that I might know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings. Being conformed to his death, in order that I may attain to the resurrection of the dead, not that I have already obtained it, or I have already become perfect, but I press on, so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of him yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies in and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. In this passage, Paul wants to talk to us about pursuit and what are you or I pursuing. Uh, we can pursue a lot of things in life. Um, just thinking back over my life of things that I've pursued in life. And trying to think of really how fulfilling or how far some of those pursuits have gotten me. So I, I pursued football because that was my love. I watched Penn State all the time. And so I was going to be the running back um, like uh, Kurt Warner and DJ Dozier and those types of guys in the 80s. That nobody could touch because he's just too big and he's too fast. Don't laugh on both counts. I have one of them. I am fast. Just not big. Now, where I came from, that didn't matter too much because nobody was very big. We, we were a uh, country hick boys, so we, we were tough enough the size we were. But, I mean, I pursued that. My brothers and I would play football in the backyard, tackle football, those two against me. And when they needed help, I, we played in the corn because we had the garden. And so corn stalks make great defenders. So if you can run through the corn getting slapped all over, keep a hold of that ball with one of your brothers who's just blindsiding you, you might just make it on the football team. So I pursued that. Obviously, there was not much to end in the pursuit of football for me. I'm 5'7", or 5'50". 
pursue other things, to pursue academics. You get to all these great grades through high school, not one person has ever asked me what my grades in high school were. What were the grades in that? high school? Oh, the first one. It only took me 38 years for someone to find out if I got good grades in high school. And I pursued that in college and beyond college, you know, so pursue those things, but nobody really, they're, they're empty. I keep reading and studying, and every time I study, I learn more. Sometimes I learn that what I thought before, maybe I didn't learn too well in the first place, and a lot of stuff I learned I don't know now. And we'll, we'll pursue a lot of things, and we'll put a lot of time and dedication to it. I mean, if you want to be really good at something, you're going to put a lot of time there, and you're going to put a lot of effort and energy. Other things we like to pursue, not just those mundane things of life, and there's nothing wrong with those pursuits, by the way. You're allowed to pursue them. In fact, you should be pursuing them. Uh, but, you know, now we think of the big categories. What do people pursue in this world? How, how do we look at our life and say, where's my next step going to be? Well, we pursue the, the, big, the big ones, right? Power. If I could just have more power. So I put my time into finding that thing that will make me powerful. How about pleasure? I, I want what makes me feel good. I want to do what, what is right for me. So my next step, all my energy is, what's good for me? What's in it for me? What do I get out of this? And pleasure could be physical pleasures or it could be uh, financial pleasures. We seek prestige to be known. <coughs> Man, if just a few more people would know my name. I mean, if I could just walk down the streets of Philadelphia, and when, when people are walking to the art museum and see the big rocky statue, instead they look over and say, Oh, Matt Kephart! Instead of wanting their picture by the statue. We pursue academics, wealth, athletics, drama, art, music. Might pursue uh, friendships might pursue our children, whatever it is. And we put all our energies in them. And again, none of those are bad in themselves. They're not bad by themselves. There are some bad things to pursue, though. So I might as well mention that for a minute. So we have some of these, let's call them neutral things. They could be bad. They could not be bad. Who knows? Let's see how that works out. But we know there are some bad things to pursue. Can you think of some of those? Sinful things. Uh, pursuit of things in order to tear other people down. Pursuit of things that I really shouldn't have in the first place. And we know what those things look like. Every, nobody needs to be reminded of those, and so I won't remind us of them. What Paul wants to talk about in this passage is that our pursuits are actually things that will keep us from knowing the only one worth pursuing in the first place. Sin definitely does it. You know how that works. You remember what Jeremiah the prophet said? Think to the tribe of Judah probably, and the Bible teacher can fix me if I have the wrong one down. He said, listen people, your sin is rising up before God. You break the covenant with God. You go your own way. You do your own thing. Your sin is creating a barrier between you and your God. We're so distracted that we set up our idols so quickly. It really doesn't matter. We look at to anything. Romans 1 tells us about that. You know, we'd rather serve creation rather than creator. We'd rather have a... Uh, worship our Bibles instead of the one who wrote the Bible. And, and we get off track. And Paul in this passage, and what I want you to think about for a year um, at school here is, in all of your pursuits of life, there is only one pursuit that will maintain your um, attention. There's only one that can grab all of who you are and hold that forever. All the other ones are transient, they're earthly, they're, they're not eternal, they're not incomparable. Only Jesus, only God, the mm -hmm. triune creator God of Scripture, He's the only one that you can never exhaust, that you can never fully grasp, that can keep you in wonder and awe for the rest of your life. <coughs> so I would like to read what uh, Paul says about that one in uh, Romans. Listen to this. Think of your pursuit, and if this was your pursuit, how fulfilling and meaningful it is. Oh, the depth and the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments, and unfathomable His ways. 
who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has become his counselor, who has first given to him that it might be paid back to him again. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Man, there's only one thing that gra grasps my heart, that makes me say, hmm, makes me say, let me look a little bit longer. Let me search a little bit further. Let me keep coming. I want to know a little bit more. There's only one, and it's, it's the God who's created all things. And somehow, in all of that, loves me and decides to be near me. That is worthy of my pursuit. Paul says, that's what I want to know. That's where I'm pressing. That's where I'm going. What a, I was trying to think of, you know, how can I help you think of a way to, to make that your pursuit? You do have to pursue other things because you are going to get good grades. I hope you can pursue that and your musical abilities, your, your athletic abilities, all those things. But how do you keep Jesus as your highest pursuit in that? And one thing is to continually in front of your head, at least it works for me, remember that Jesus is the only one that is incomprehensible that is unfathomable, that is unsearchable, that has no need of you. It's all about him, not you. He created you, actually, because he wants you, not because he needs you. And so, um, what I thought would be kind of cool to do, I gave you one example where I was Romans uh, 11, 33, to 36 or 8. Um, so creative and artistic and things here. So, um, how about from now and over the course, if you can find biblical passages like that that speak of God's unsearchable ways, incomprehensible nature, His majesty, His worthy to be sought, worthy to be known, is that He will keep your mind forever. And you find the, that little piece of scripture, three verses, one verse, five maybe, and then you can just write it down. If you're unartistic like me, you're going to write it on a three by five card. If you're artistic like 98 or 9% of you, you're probably going to do something with it. You're going to write it in calligraphy, or you'll draw it as a picture, or you can, I don't know, put decoupage. I don't even know art terms, so maybe our teachers can help me. And um, if you do that, and you will bring it to me and the chapel leadership team, I'll make sure it gets posted around the school. You don't need to put your name on it. Remember, it's not about you. So put a sixth grader, or put a junior, or put faculty. And see how many we can find. I would bet that there's one in every book of the Bible, and there's 66. So we should at least be able to find 66 of these. And I can't imagine going to hardly any salt. 